class, we are back to read more SCPs as well as confuse the hell out of Dragon. How dare you confuse a child? I don't give a fuck. Pretty fucking easy. He used children, right, Dragon? Hmm? See? <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. You were very you were mumbling. No. no, I spoke very loudly and clearly. Yeah, oh. we we heard. You were I was just also confused. I'm also listening to music. Yeah. Anyway. What what did you say? What, cherry? Uh oh. Jerry is dead. I'm dead, Johnny. <laughs> I asked her to continue. Not uh, my fault. The Discord mutes me. Uh, this this Discord cut out, and it made it sound like you said, "I'm dead, child." That's exactly what I was thinking. Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for confirming your own death. So that has Here to be clipped. Me. That has to be clipped. <laughs> I don't know how to clip things. I'll clip it later. I'm gonna hope. Not here. I I hope I hope that you were on the proper screen where everyone could hear what the fuck just happened. Anyway, uh, yeah, I am. But um, anyway, first SCP. SCP seven five one is an amorphous parasite that feeds off the organs of humans and other mammals. It no was screen. A... what? Oh, right. I don't know why I did that. But what the hell? Come on. Show up. Thank you. Stupid Discord. Been doing this for how long? For years. Don't forget to stream up in Discord. <laughs> anyway. It weighs approximately 2 kilograms before infesting a host. And can weigh as little as twenty five percent of this after after reproduction. The majority of SP seven five one's mass con consists of unknown substance with a gelatin like consistency, with red veins running through through it. Analysis has revealed that the veins contain a mix of blood and the progenitor's host, along with the variant anesthetics and immunosuppressive drugs. SCP-751 lives in damp environments such as freshwater bodies, or freshwater bodies of water, swamps, rainforests, and sewers. And we'll leave these environments when in search of for our hosts, traveling for a maximum of twelve hours before succumbing to dehydration. SCP-751 has been observed to move through sewer pipes, water lines, and across most terrains with the notable exceptions of sand and bodies of salt water. It is theorized that SP-751 hunts potentially hosts by detecting carbon dioxide and sentinel, although this is unconfirmed as of redacted. SCP-751 begins its feeding process by settling on top of a sleeping host's stomach region and begins to enter through the skin by osmosis. Anesthetics in SP-751's veins mix with the host's blood at this time, minimizing the chance of the host's awakening during the process. Once within the host's body, SP-751 comes to rest inside the stomach, quickly reshaping itself to line the, the gastric walls. Over the course of the next two or three hours, SP-751 adapts its own composition to closely match that of the host's stomach. Maintaining digestive processes. When the host awakens, there is no, there is little to no evidence of any incident, and the host will continue under its normal routine. Over the next three or four days, SV seven five one will digest the host's stomach, using it to build up its own mass for further expansion. It will then slowly expand to engulf and digest other organs in the host's body, generally starting with the intestines and moving to the liver, kidneys, and lungs. 
SP-7541 will adapt itself to mimic each of these organs in turn, maintaining all of, of the host's bodily functions and releasing immunosuppressant chemicals to prevent re rejection by the host. The entire process takes approximately one month in a human host and no long longer in larger hosts. Uh, uh, oh, and longer in larger hosts. After its feeding period, SP-751 reverts back to its original composition in a matter of minutes. This process lowers SP-751's density considerably, causing it to swell to a size that the host's body cannot contain. The host's skin will stretch and then burst, hmm. releasing SP-751. At this point, SP-751 will reproduce, dividing into 10 or 20 smaller entities, which then move to the nearest damp area to grow and Preparation uh, for hunting for our own hosts. <laughs> In the addendum, it says request to experiment with modifying SV751 for use in organ transplants. Approved mm -hmm. by doctor redacted. I have a question. Is it a war crime yeah. to steal organs from hospitals? Yes. Okay, actually, I want to know, actually. I'm genuinely curious. Then go to Google. Because the thing is, it doesn't always take place during war. That's the thing. Cause I, you would think a war crime? Or would it be a crime against humanity? Anyway. I'm curious. Anyway. I would never the, do it. On the SCB. Enough about war crimes. <laughs> I guess that's the specific thing. Um, if it's a war crime, it necessarily is something that's taking place during the war. And I want to imagine that stealing organs from a hospital is going to be illegal whether or not there is a war going on. Just the a thing is... Sorry. <laughs> no, just a figurehead. Anyway, the... The SCP at hand. I mean, it was already classified, but it doesn't sound like, oh yeah, by the way, we're good with maintaining this. And it's not dangerous whatsoever. Yeah, it's, it's still dangerous. <laughs> Why was it changed to Euclid? Well, probably because it has a more manageable mode of reproduction. And I would imagine that, for instance, if we were to look at the um... Uh, the addendums. I'm guessing that uh, the situation has gotten to the point where pretty much most of the instances are either in SCP custody or otherwise being taken care of. Yeah. Like, it'd you... definitely be a pain in the ass to keep a hold of, but it's... I, I can understand it being downgraded to Euclid. Yeah, like, so... when you think about it, like, technically... Uh, the shy guy could literally break out of almost any containment they put him in, but that's, and he's very dangerous. But that's not necessarily why. Uh, like, like the fact that he could break out doesn't make it so that he is keep it. He's Euclid because as long as you keep people from seeing his face, he's not going to break out. Yeah. It actually makes me wonder what sh would we break Shy Guy's mentality if everyone on the planet saw his face? I'd imagine he would just murder everyone. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think there's much stopping him. It has a valid point, which is one of the reasons why very good some people cannot see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. Actually, there is a story about um. Wait, wait. Zero nine six during when day breaks, if you know what that SCP is. Let's not talk about that. Let's you know right. let's focus on the SCP, the SCP and just keep going. Talking right. about the shy guy. Okay. No. So do you know the movie uh Bird Box? It would be a situation like that. I'd imagine. Except actually not really, because you could easily get around the bird box 
pull shenanigans and stuff by covering your eyes. Yeah, but anyway. Uh, so we're still thinking re uh, reassign. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. This ain't, we, we are not putting the organ eating like monster into spook tier. <laughs> okay. But talking about uh, human organs, according to twenty nine, uh, not 2019, 2018, uh, the prices of your organs are like what? only in the hundred thousand. Yeah, all right. that's all I wanted to say. But your organs aren't worth a lot. Hush. Kind of weird. Penguin, penguin. This is an SCP stream, not a child is disturbing stream. <laughs> anyway. Uh, SCP-752 is an underground city in the northern Redacted Mountains, spanning Redacted Kilometer Square, a population of approximately 10,000, an array of electric lighting devices powered by a geothermal generator that create day and night matching the rhythm of the outside world. A shield built of unknown metals surrounds the entire city and blocks all known signals and radiation, including sonar. Study of this metal is restricted to on-site efforts to minimize the chances of containment breach. SCP-752-1 are inhabitants of SCP-752. Phys physically, SCP-752-1 appears human. However, the social behavior exhibited by SCP-752-1 and large groups bear no resemblance to that of humans or any social mammal. Individuals of SP752-1 pose no self-interest whatsoever and are motivated solely by desire to advance the greater good of SP752. SP752-1 currently possesses technology significantly more advanced than exists outside of SP752. However, their rate of progress has begun to stagnate. Documents recovered at the sites indicate that SP-752 was constructed or enacted years ago by a group of unidentified scientists and philosophers operating under the alias Udaimon. SP-752-1 was engineered by Udaimon as an attempt to create an ideal society. Alright, so... Let's see. Uh, document 3. Day 1, Udaimon-Alpha-1. Population of Udaimonia, 100. For a glorious new day, this is the day Homo Udaimonia will set their calendar by. After the last battery of mass testing, we've introduced 50 males and 50 females to the final testing area. Nothing but them, the artificial sun, the temple, and the few animal and plant species we've introduced for domestication. Nothing left for Anamaimon now but to observe. To observe. Document 7. Year 8, Day 24. Adaimon dash gamma dash one. Population of Anaimania 124. Population growth has been above normal as expected from our Udaimoniacs. Instead of competing, they cooperate with one another in everything. All of the animal species provided have been success su successfully domesticated for food and labor. No signs of agricultural activity yet. Technological progress is proceeding as expected based on the data we left them in the temple. Document 22, year 15, day 212, Udiaimon Delta 4, population of Udiaimonia 170. Growth has continued, showing marked divinance from normal human social behavior, whereas Homo sapiens were never intended to live in groups of more than a few hundred. Homo udaimonia will function perfectly in groups of thousands or millions. Agriculture is going at, at full tilt now, making use the, of the available aquifers for irrigation. 
deviant behaviors have begun to emerge. The taboo against cannibalism seems to have vanished from the dead. Udiamoniacs are being consumed for sustenance. Additionally, disabled or feeble individuals are auto-homiciding or being killed at a worrying rate. Beta-1 wants to interfere, try to lay down moral guidelines, but Alpha-1 insists that finding these things repulsive is one of the problems with our society and any interaction would taint the UDI maniacs. Technological development is proceeding significantly faster than estimated rates. Construction has begun on several structures of unknown purpose and interesting development considering that no actual buildings previously existed in Udayamania. Document 70. Year 24, Day 4. Udayaman Beta 4, population of Udayamania, over 300. Population growth has suddenly exploded, nearly doubling in less than a decade. For similarly, this increase is related to the structures. Some other extremely worrying behaviors have begun to emerge. The Udayamaniacs have developed a meritocracy caste system and are forcing the strongest and least intelligent to build for them. No, not forcing the workers to do it voluntarily, but they're working themselves to death. In fact, everybody in the society is being worked to death. Estimated life expectancy is about 45, and, and we proved to the initial testing that Udiamoniacs, I mean, Udiamoniacs can live to 150 easily. No signs of cultural development so far, except that they've built the vague hits of a divine creator called the Udiamon into a brutally strict moral system. On the bright side, we've taken to heart the idea that one day the Udiamon will come back for them and lead them to another world as we intended. Is that a cult? We've been calling these odd behaviors deviant, but they're not. This society has no de defiance. All inhibition is judged based on its merits and implemented or discarded. I'm starting to have serious doubts about the whole about the value of, of this whole thing, Alpha Dash One and his team of Genesis seem oddly unsurprised by these developments. I bet they knew this would happen. Document 142, Year 40, Day 325, Udayamon Alpha 1, population of Udayamonia, over 1,000. Population continues to climb, technological pro prowess, Continues to increase exponentially. At this rate, they will reach our level well before the release date. Beta, Gamma, and Delta have no vision. They grow increasingly disgusted by my wonderful creations. I would never have taken them on the project, but I needed their expertise to construct the development chamber. I have taken measures to ensure they never discover the contents of Udiamania's nurseries. Hopefully this will be sufficient. To forestall a mutiny. Document 314. Year 70, day 87, Udiamon Delta 1. Population of Udiamonia, three, over 3,000. Population growth shows no signs of slowing. High rise type shelters are now being constructed in addition to unknown buildings to allow for further growth. Technological advancement continues to exceed all expectations. We can o only hope that it'll stagnate once they get through what we left in the temple. Undesirable behaviors have worsened. Gamma attempted to intervene and was slaughtered. Oh. The rest of us attempted a coup against Alpha. Alpha 3 pretended to sympathize and managed to fatally poison most of Beta. Nevertheless, the coup was a success. We still don't know what's in those buildings, but considering what happened to Gamma, we're not touching it. Alpha 1, 2, and 5 escaped. The others are dead or captured. We've disabled the release mechanism and sealed off the place as much as we dare. The Udayamaniacs still believe that there's no world beyond that shield Gamma built. 
Now, hopefully, they'll never learn otherwise. Unmanned Exploration Unit 752-A was sent into SB-752 on Redacted. Footage recovered from within the nursery structures indicate an extensive and apparently voluntary dead expunged before conception. UEU-752-A uh, went offline redacted hours into the expedition, and within two months, te te technology evidently derived from it was seeing extensive use in SP-752. Further expeditions must use as little advanced technology as possible. As direct competition between Homo, Homo sapiens and SP-752-1 is projected to lead to an SK-class dominant shift, SP-752-1 must be kept ignorant of that world outside their cavern at all costs. Yeah, the description didn't include the documents. I just thought to understand it better, I thought I would read the documents. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So um, it's a cult? Well, it's. I think Maybe? it's less a cult and more. Effectively, a altered human species that is inherently geared towards a hive mind situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I feel like they they said all we really need to say about it. It's. Well, we don't have a, what was it, XK dominance shift or whatever? Yeah, SK dominance yeah. shift. But SK. that's actually a form of XK. Gotcha. If it gets Thanks. out, that's yeah. the thing, though. ZK and XK are different, but XK has multiple classes while ZK doesn't. Gotcha. So, yeah. I mean, you can't exactly create multiple classes of reality breaking in on itself. Yeah. <laughs> so, point being, I think this squarely goes into XK. Yeah, I, I'm kind of in agreement on that. What do you think, Jerry and Dragon? Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, literally, all it would take is for these hive mind human boys to realize that their cavern isn't actually the entire world. And then we uh, we could expect to see quite literally the exact same thing that happened with colonialism in uh, the 14 and 1500s, mm -hmm. except on a much larger scale to the entirety of humanity by a foe that is nearly invincible. And in fact, I think that's a very good analogy considering the technical technological differences. Right. Or something like what happened with SCP-1000, where I think it was like a god who gave hum a humanity uh, the ability to fight against the Bigfoot species and make them oh, yeah. less intelligent with their own weaponry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think they're actually really trying to hard, harm, us, harm us in any way. We just beat the living shit out of them for no reason. Is that... <laughs> if you think about it, Bigfoots are kind of like furries. I'm pretty sure that uh, humans took down the Bigfoot simply because uh, without taking any of that, we're not even able to do that. Hi, Pika. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Jerry, I, uh, you, you, you don't have to repeat what you said. All I heard was a scream thing. Sorry. Yeah. I said, I'm pretty sure uh, we had to take down the Bigfoot race because. Uh, if we didn't, then they would have been the ones to stay as an intelligent race, and we would have never evolved. 
goal to get into that. Yeah. We would have always stayed the stupid lesser race. So it sucks, but I I don't really blame them, so And now all those Bigfoots are just out there and they just they just want that game. Yeah. They just they just wanna to, wanna to have society again. Yeah, do you, you think fuck there off, are Mika. any <laughs> Do you think there are any Bigfoots in New York? What? Do you think that there are any Bigfoots in New York? As in the state New York? The state and the city. The city itself? No. The state? No. (laughs) Because Bigfoot is almost certainly completely fictitious? Don't know what else there is to say in terms of like Bigfoot sightings. There's Bigfoot sightings in literally every state. But yeah, that. What? Oh wait, actually, can I say something about Bigfoot sightings and a theory that I really like about them? No. Fuck you. Anyways, so there's like a a theory that's been like circulating for like I'm pretty sure years. But a lot of people are like, yeah, what if like all the Bigfoot sightings are actually just people walking around in fursuits and people are like really confused on what the fuck they're seeing? I, I don't mean, know why. So- I mean, that's the case with some Bigfoot sightings and hoaxes. I have done nothing. And you muted the child. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why someone would be walking around the woods in a very expensive fursuit, but, like, I guess that's their life. Anyway. Listen. Listen. Mm-hmm. Patterson Gimlin. Patterson Gimlin film. It was created explicitly in a manner where the Bigfoot that was shot is almost identical to one that Patterson had drawn in a book previously, alongside having several details that make no goddamn sense or are incredibly unlikely, such as the Bigfoot having permanent breasts, something that is only seen in humans and would almost certainly not be seen in Bigfoots. For some reason, Patterson always showed them having breasts And it just so happens that the Bigfoot that he captured in film, Silent Pika, the Bigfoot that he captured in film just so happened to have that thing that he kept putting into his drawing. It sounds like he had a fursuit made. It also sounds like he had a fetish. That's also (laughs) very likely. I'm out loud, but when you start putting boobs on animals, it starts sounding like you want to look at the animal with boobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Just, yeah. Uh, on to the next SCP. But um. Listen. Sorry, but just this final thing, right? At this point, you have to be used to these streams yeah. always trailing off into random directions. Anyway. I like stream in your phone. Yeah, anyway, the next SCP, uh, its object class is Keter Containment Pending. Oh. So, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. We have the Keter, but we don't have it yet. Yep. Uh oh. SCP 755 A is a graffiti vandal who is thought at the time of of archiving of this report to be active in San Redacted EO. Though the work of the artist has been cited in eight other cities in the continental US and Europe, including Denver, Colorado, Newark, New Jersey, Mooney Redacted, 
Security footage shows the vandal to be a light-skinned individual with a slim build who stands approximately 2 meters in height. From the basic body type shown in the footage, it is assumed, though not confirmed, that the vandal is male. The vandal regularly travels large cities, leaving behind instances of SB755-B. No, you should not, Pika. But anyway, SB755-B is a graffito style and, and form varied by instance that invariably reads, Watch for the White Bird. The graffito is... Right? Shut up. The graffito is typically written directly in onto surfaces with marker or paint, or in some recorded instances, inscribed on scrap metal and left in prominent locations. The writing appear uh, materials appear to have no anomalous properties, and s several recovered instances are stored for study in low risk materials sector of Site ninety three. Persons who read the graffito are invulnerably injured or killed in apparent accidents, accidents involving a white bird of some description. Okay, it, real quick. Real yes. Quick, because this is bugging me. Is, is it actually a specific word that is graffito, or are you mispronouncing graffiti? No, it's saying graffito. Okay, so maybe that's just something I haven't heard of and I'm dumb. I was, I was, yeah, it's G-R-A-F-F-I-T-O. Huh. So... Okay. So so this is not an instance where I should be... Got it. No. <laughs> this is the actual word. <laughs> that is fair. Okay. You can continue. <laughs> I'm looking at graffito because what the heck is that? <laughs> it's, like, it's just a fancy word for graffiti. I... I was yeah, I looked it up. Penguin's right. It is just another way of saying graffiti. I hate am it. I, am I the <laughs> only one that understood that? Am I the smart one here? Oh my god, I'm the smart one no, here. Let's find no. out. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Anyway. No, you are, you are in fact the dumb one for understanding the dumb word. No, I'm an artist and thus I understand the artsy word. Right? Anyway. I was old enough to speak, but I did not know it. That's because of a long line of artists. Okay, fair point. Anyway, I don't know what the SCP. No. <laughs> Extensive research has confirmed a statistical correlation between the accents and and having read the graffito. And that instances of the phrase threatened by persons other than the vandal do not correlate with accents or injuries to any measurable extent. SCP-755 has brought to the attention of the Foundation when the EMT discovered a journal belonging to the late investigative journalist Graham Scott on the scene of the seven-car pileup that resulted in the deaths of Scott and redacted other individuals. The journal details Scott's attempts to locate and interview the vandal who he believed was attempting to warn the victims of the white bird in order to save their lives. The white bird mentioned in the graffito and Scott's writing has not been confirmed to exist. In many events, no bird can be confirmed to have been involved outside the direct testimony of the injured party, with some or all other witnesses claiming not to have seen such avian at all or with eyewitnesses disagreeing on the positioning ex exact correlation in species of the bird. And that's the SCP. So, as a side note, just a completely interesting thing that my brain has been on ever since started reading this is uh the fact that one of my favorite albums and songs from a norse folk group called Wadrona uh literally translates to white raven so this entire time my brain has been stuck thinking about that song 
while we talk about how these white birds are going around and causing havoc? Now, the question is, is the graffiti artist actually a good person or causing all this? Because they say it's, like, connected. I would, I would be willing to guess that if, like, regardless of the graffiti artist's intention, I think they are causing it, since these accidents seem to only be happening specifically after someone has read or seen their art, which implies that the art is the catalyst that means the accident is going to happen. Or it could be that the artist made that because they knew the bird was going to come. The bird? So bright? We're talking about bright here? Yes. Fuck off. No, Gosh damn it, I turn it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, they are tagging these places. I believe it mentioned pub like public places, which means that just any random person that walks by is going to be affected by this. Mm -hmm. So, does that mean that this entity is just straight up omniscient as far as this has to do? He knows to put the graffiti there at that exact time because literally everyone there is coincidentally going to have an accident that revolves around the bird? I don't omniscient. I think he just needs to know a lot about the birds uh, where they're going to go because there are lots of birds that have weird patterns. All you have to do is know the birds' patterns. I mean, so yeah. Well, yeah, but that that doesn't really like literally anyone from anywhere could end up seeing these. Yes, yeah. and plus like, oh yeah, sorry. Like Let's say, for example, he tags it uh, on the side, like on a billboard. Anyone who's driving down that highway, somehow he knows that the white bird is going to cause harm to them at some point. Even though some of them are going to go, like, absolutely all over the place. These people aren't going to the same place. Does this mean that he's just tracking down all of the white birds on earth because it's also like not that the white birds are specifically the things that are anomalous it's just that these incidents have a white bird involved mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. implies like someone like this this could be anything as benign as someone's stinking rearing off of the road because they didn't want to hit the hit a dove or a dove literally pecking someone's eye out. But it's not a specific white bird or type of white bird. It could just be any white bird. Also, there's one thing I want to say. Uh, Wait, why did I go for why did I go for doves? Goose geese exist. Any, geese, are, geese are evil. Anyway, uh here's one thing I would like to say. Obviously the bird has an an a mimetic effect because no one remembers seeing it. Yeah. It didn't say it in there, oh, but okay. since, because no one can remember it, it obviously has that type of power. It could also, well, uh, or the person who did the painting has that power and decided to do that. Hmm. Why? Yeah, well, okay. and book one's right, except for people who saw the graffiti. Yeah, Can I so... say this? What? Why do I feel like this is something Dr. Bright would do? Like, you are reading it now, and I was like, I know what that, that motherfucker has to be bright. That just, that has to be fucking bright. There's like no fucking what way. What has to be bright? It feels like a bright Dr. Thing. Bright can't be two what? SCPs. I know, I know that's fucking impossible. I mean, technically he is, but technically he's not. Because he did something stupid, and now there's a whole site filled of Dr. Brights. Don't question it. 
Oh, that's horrifying. <laughs> he, he was actually uh, horrified it by it too. <laughs> please tell you me can, those You can please, scare Dr. Bright. Oh my please god. Please tell me that none of the Dr. Brights in that site have access to the nuclear warhead. No. But okay, uh, the site is completely closed off. Okay, good. Okay. What do they do in there, though? Like, no, do they uh, all have their individual am- amul- amulets? No. Oh. But, but anyway, uh, but, on with the SCP. Yeah, we can talk so, about that another time. Yeah. Ultimately, especially since it seems, as Book One pointed out, that it's specifically only the people who see the artwork will see the white bird and acknowledge its existence in the instances. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's fairly safe to say that, again, like whether or not the artist is a malicious guy, I think that he has caused it. Yeah. He's throwing birds at people. Like, like it could be the case that he thinks he's trying to help people, but it 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 really does seem like the main catalyst is just the fact that people saw his stuff. Yeah. That that in terms of the danger level, I would say city. Yeah. Because, oh, um, damn it! We need an in between between city and certain group. Because like I could see this being a serious issue. Like, like think about the. Uh, the predatory street art, the owl. Like, if he did something like put this up on top of a billboard, you could fuck over thousands of people, but it wouldn't necessarily wipe out a whole city. So I, I'm I'm torn, is what I'm saying. I think that would go under a certain group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably. Yeah, that's probably. Yeah, I think it would only at the point because I was thinking about this and it could possibly work if someone were to put that message on television. Oh. Did they uh did it, did it at any point mention whether or not the effects are transferred through like print media and well, in that case, television. It had not, but a th- but what if it could? That's something that the that's something that really needs to be tested. That's horrifying. Do we like, want to test it though? Yeah. Say, this is the SCP Foundation. If that's a vector, we're we're oh wait, hold on. One oh wait. TV. Otherwise, it could have a disastrous yeah. effect. No, no, yeah, no. They're no. Pro- if they test it, they should probably do it like in like just in the SCP Foundation with one person. That's who can what see I was it. thinking. Like, take a video of the artwork, have someone watch said video. Are they affected by it? That sort of thing. Oh shit! Wait, wait. Can this affect other SCPs? Uh, it does oh, not show that, but um, there is an instance of a recording. Having that message in it, and the foundation had to remove twenty minutes, uh, twenty-one minutes, because of it. Okay, so that does imply that they know that that it can spread in that manner. So, Horrible. yeah. So if someone puts it on the okay. TV, and the foundation doesn't know, we're well. Fucked. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people affected by that, but really, when you think about it. TV has such few viewers nowadays. It's yeah, nowadays it's all it, it's all streaming platforms. Well, but okay. Think about it, internet. Fair well, point. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, there's it internet. Can go on TV. It can go on the internet. Let's be fair. A recording's yeah. a recording. Think about if it gets on the internet. Oh yeah, you know the, the, there are those types of motherfuckers. They're like, oh, look, look at this, look at this, oh, look, look. Especially TikTok. TikTok does not put spoiler warnings for fucking anything. So, yeah. so this raises the question don't on. Don't prove me right, please don't. No, no, no. Because right about this. No, because the thing is also talking about this is also the people that post this shit online. Uh, do you think that they go outside? 
Because, like, if you don't go outside, are you really affected by this bird? Right. I mean, yeah. it's still going to go after you, no matter what. Fair point. It doesn't matter where you are. You, yeah. Have you, you never see seen a, a bird go through a window? Uh, no, actually. <laughs> Most of the time, kind of they just hit the window and knock themselves so the fuck out. Yeah. No, they're, I've, they're I've had a full-grown eagle just smash through a window <laughs> floor and die. Yeah. That is very different than like a regular small bird. But it doesn't <laughs> say it's a small bird. It could be a big bird. It could be a small bird. It could be any type of white bird. Okay, Wait, what if it's a penguin? The white bird had to be small. That's what right? it's a pe- point. It never said it had to be small. Fair point. But what if it's a penguin? So penguins aren't are fully white. Like penguins <laughs> penguins penguin. aren't right. fully white, but they do have white. And it never said if it's fully white There's or not. True. Such thing is an albino bird. Yeah. And yeah, what yeah. if? Well, what if it's an albino? L L L bino albino. <laughs> My brain just <laughs> We're going way into this fucking SCP. How okay. does it feel? How does it feel, Hatchet? Uh, right. <laughs> please, pl- please, or well, the child. Also, <laughs> also, I just have to ask a question because I think Jerry might know this, but um, this spelling of mold it, it confuses me. Because it's it's M O U L D. You don't know what that is. No. Oh, that's. This is that's the... just that's just an. Okay, that's just the spelling for the type of mold you you would use to make a shape with. Uh, in other in other words, to bring to bring the conversation all the way back around, the sort the sort of uh that that's how you would spell it if you want to say the Bigfoot researcher made a mold of Bigfoot's foot. Okay. I was thinking of the fungi or the disease mold. I was not thinking that. <laughs> I was you think disease mold. It can it can also be used to refer to that depending on like where you all are yeah. potentially. So e- either way, back to the horrifying possibility of this getting onto TV. Television. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think... Social media would be worse though, honestly. Well, yeah, and I guess that's the big thing. Like TV, something creepy happens on TV. Someone records that, oh. puts it on the internet. Everyone's fucked. Mm-hmm. I, I could, I could see it going on like, like a news site. And Fox like fucking news. news. Oh, well, God. like probably more than just Fox. I so. mean, yeah, it like, gets on the internet. Yeah. Uh huh. Fox News horrifies me. So well, then, like many, many of those like, uh, cha- like news channels, they like, they like post their stuff onto the internet. So, I guess the other thing to think about is, like, like that is a very dangerous, like, possibility. But you gotta keep in mind the SCP Foundation is still pretty proficient at getting stuff off of um, off of the internet very quickly. Fair point. There. So I, 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 I st- tour. Okay, sorry. That is very. I, just, I still say city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think, I think that potential bumps it up from a certain group to city. Because it, it, like that could cause a lot more harm. But I, I still don't think it's going to go beyond that because the SCP Foundation has their shit together for the most part. Oh. Yeah, that's fair. When, when. And they're not throwing Plus, people into the goddamn sun. What? Sun hatchet. What? I was joking. Mostly. No, I, I didn't hear you. Yeah. Because Discord. 
Like, of course, Discord. I jokingly said, what's wrong with throwing people into the sun? Uh. The, the joke was ruined by Discord. Thank you, Discord. Uh, so. <laughs> Some people are not going to understand, but I just tweeted the picture and I was given from the SCP site, Watch for the White Bird. <laughs> Watch for the bright. Yeah, actually, no, because... Yeah, because, like, bright has done, like, has a history of violence. Excuse me, like, Bright. Probably talking SCP bright, not not you I'm, bright. No, no, actually both brights have well, a history. Yeah, both <laughs> bright. well, te- well technically, but that was also generally in self defense or yeah. as a security officer. Fair point. So it, it's it's not quite the same as saying Bright has a history of violence because that implies like <laughs> I'm a criminal. Like, like actually like actually problematic <laughs> violence. <laughs> Say Bright thing. has a history of, like like when you when you say Bright has a history of violence, I think the janitor from kindergarten, okay? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on to the next SCP. Oh wait, yeah, we've a... been on this for a while. Yeah. Yep. Uh, da, 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 da. Die, father. <laughs> anyway, uh next SCP. SCP seven seventy is a strain of mold that is similar in appearance to the common uh, Cisarum polycephalum slime mold. I'm actually surprised I probably said that correctly without even trying. Right. And yet, and yet you right, mispronounced send me, Right, right. Send me the. Send me I know. The, I send know. Me I, the said, link. I I know. Send I said the the first part uh, of the word right because I know P H Y. I mean, wait. Yeah, P H Y is like. Or something like that. I don't. I don't know. What I'm trying to think. My brain farted. Here, yeah. Send it to me, and I'll see. Your brain is flat from its brain. How can your How can your brain fart when it is a fart? There you go. It's in strain planning. Your skull was filled with nothing but methane. If you think about it. I feel like if you like did sure? the little tap thing, like how you knock on doors, if you knocked on Bright's head, Be like sure? you would just hear like Probably a boom, 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 boom sound. Hold on, I couldn't hear what Adrian said. Dre, yeah. shut the fuck up. I was saying Fisurum polycephalum. What's that? No, we've spent approximately five minutes bickering. Over so I, I wasn't that far no. off of of it. Like I almost, I, yeah. I said like the okay. second word yeah. correctly. The first one back. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna look this up and like give you like some like images. I have to go to sleep. Good night. Good night, Penguin. We're free. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, sorry. understandable. What I'll also mean, you know. Anyway. I'm sorry. Good night. Night night. night. Right, just being a mean lady. Go to bed. Good night. Oh, we love you. Yes, but yeah, I've just got to I just gotta. I'm sorry. I'm still gonna. I'm still gonna poke fun at you. You pronounced "coo" as "cope" earlier, and that is unacceptable. Well, sorry. How dare! I didn't mention it at the time because I didn't pronounced want to interrupt coo? the story. Uh, what is what? She pronounced "coo" as in "coup d'état" as "cope." Oh. Granted, it is. Granted, it is a French word, so it's spelled fucking weird. Yeah. But, but still, it's a really common word. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, bright. It's okay to a- it's okay to ask if you don't know how to pronounce a word. No, I was just reading it, and I was not paying much attention. <laughs> I, I think know. That I- I think that describes all of these strings. Fuck off. I mean, I do ask help for Latin words, because they are a piece of shit. 
Well, yeah, because no matter what happens, when someone uses one of the scientific names, it doesn't matter how hard you're trying to just read it without thinking of it, your brain's going to have a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> and yet we still use Latin. For good reason. Yeah. Things used in base words. Not going to be not used. Yeah, and apparently there are some people in America who want us to use Latin as our native language. Wait, what? Why? I don't know. It is not easy to learn. <laughs> that, well, that's the thing. That would quite literally pose issues because Latin being a dead Latin language... Pronounced. Well, it's not just that. Latin being a dead language is the reason why it was chosen for scientific names. Mm -hmm. Oh, so okay. It, it could... Right, go ahead. I was going to say, and also, like, um, people in the U.S. can't even speak English properly. <laughs> How do we expect them to learn another language? I mean, yeah, that is true, but what is it? Like, we have an 80% literacy rate, which is just fucking abysmal. Yeah, anyway. Um... Oh, I thought it was going to be lower than that. So, I don't know what was it lower than that. I remember eighty yeah. percent last I checked. No, no, I said I thought it was going to be lower than that. Yeah. Oh, so it's it's not that bad, but you got to keep in mind that literacy level is also on average at the area of a fourth grader. <laughs> oh, not yeah. even joking. But but as as long as you're a fourth grader, you're literate. You're pretty decently literate. So, Adurna, did you find out what it what it is? Yeah. It is the the, the it is the fungus. Among it is Remaru. No. No, it actually says it's a slime mold. Slime Remaru is not is not mold. He's a slime, no. but that's not mold. <laughs> he's both now. No, he's not. <laughs> that's not how it works, right? But what if it is? No, it's not. It's really not how that works. We were just right. We were just talking about how most <laughs> how how Americans have issue with English. Do you really want to immediately be an example of that issue? <laughs> no, but an SCP Foundation it could work. What? Yeah, SP nine one four. It can combine things if used correctly. Well, yeah. <laughs> but are you implying that it's going to combine Rimuru, the fictional slime monster that got reincarnated after getting stabbed? How are you going to combine that with mold using the SCP? Well, you would first put the uh, manga in there, bring the character to life, and then put that character and mold in there and then redo it. There you go. Combined. I'm sorry to tell you this, right, but you're not gonna get your waifu Rimuru. I don't even. I barely watch the show. I'm just being stupid. Wouldn't it be yeah. a spando though? Because the, because the, the soul is a guy. Yeah. The character is generally gender uh, neutral, if I believe. Yeah, gender neutral. Yeah, but he has... they have the ability to switch to either gender, but they prefer uh, taking a non-gendered uh, look. Well, yeah, but that's like specifically with his body expression. Like okay. in terms of the like his gender identity, I'm pretty confident he's a guy. Gender identity: he is male and physical appearance. They prefer a genderless appearance as they're, as, uh, if they try to turn into a female, it reminds them too much of the person who's dead. And if they turn male, they're not really all that fond of it either. So something just gender neutral is what they go for. Yeah. Anyway, this is, has okay. been your I've, shit I've ad for this anime. I've, I've, <laughs> I posted a picture of it in stream planning. Well. The Go fuck take a is look that at thing? <laughs> oh, hello, fungus. 
Yes, this is the fungus among us. <laughs> fungus among us. God fucking damn it. <laughs> anyway, I'll go go ahead and reread the thing. That's probably that 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 looks that looks very pretty, but it's also probably dangerous. Yeah. Anyway, that's actually one of the prettier images I I found. Ah. Yeah. Anyway, on with the SCP. SCP-770 is a strain of mold that is similar in appearance to the common Physarum polycephalum slime mold. It is largely colorless and translucent in appearance and will adhere to almost any surface. What sets SCP-770 apart is that it, resp- it respires without oxidation by means... What? Mean? what? Do you mean respirates or? But R E S P I R E S. Respirates. Oh, respirates. Respirates. That's also one that I don't know. Anyway, you may continue. Without oxidation, uh, by means of a poorly understood nuclear reaction. When present on the surface, SP-770 will absorb any radioactive isotopes or any isotopes larger in atomic mass than iron-56, with with preference given to heavier isotopes. These isotopes will then undergo a nuclear reaction in which they are reduced to a more stable isotopes and energy is released. The decay products of this reaction along with the energy produced, are used by SP-770 as a source of substance uh, substance, so it may grow and reproduce. There is a strong possibility that the elements produced by SP-770 will also be radioactive isotopes. During ingestion and reaction of isotopes, SP-770 will emit significant quantities of ionizing radiation, including Alpha, beta, gamma, neutrons, and hard X rays. The radiation output is so substantive that that an adult human would receive an LD fifty level dose of radiation after approximately redacted minutes exposure to five hundred milligrams of active SV seven seventy. The mold would will also release copious amounts of heat and can achieve a surface tem- temperature in excess of 1200 degrees centigrade. While doing this, it will appear to grow glow white hot. How SP-770 is able to withstand this level of radiation and temperature without disintegration is unknown. Currently, the most feasible way to sterilize an area of SP-770 is by means of festivalized plasma arc surfaces that are designed to reach temperatures of 3,000 degrees centigrade. Due to relative abundance of viable viable isotopes, the fast energy produced by nuclear reactions and the propensity of neutron irradiation to create more unstable isotopes, SP-770 has an extreme capacity for growth. With adequate food supply, SP-770 will produce spores approximately every redacted hours and is capable of doubling in mass every redacted hours. As no known herbivores or herbicidal diseases could survive exposure to the radiation produced by SP-770, there is no limiting factor to the mold achieving a geometric growth rate in the event of a containment breach or worse, a dead expunge event. Projections indicate that the mold would spread quickly and the Earth's biosphere would be rendered uninhabitable after approximately redacted months. Sterilization of affected areas via nuclear weapons may be a viable option. However, should SP-770 survive the initial blast, then fallout would provide a tremendous rich growth medium. So, here's the thing. What if this SCP actually made it to Chernobyl? (laughs) <laughs> I did not change my name. 
nuke mold. Okay, I'm guessing you got a, another new favorite SCP. <laughs> uh, yes. Partially because I'm just generally fascinated by nuclear anything, really. Yeah. But, yeah, no, this I'm is... Uh, sorry, what? I said I'm fascinated with it, too. Especially yeah. the uh, <clears throat> processes of... Um, yeah, fuck. Processes of so uh not fucking atomic um fuck I brain fart. Yeah. Also this is processes of brain fart? <laughs> processes of atomic fucking brain fart. That is the statement in that. Also, Hatchet, this is actually one of the unpopular SCPs. Because all the popular SCPs have like a thousand or more in rating. This only has 140 rating, so it's not very popular, even though it's quite interesting. Well, either way, uh, oh, I no. think this is what. So, um, thing it reaching about Chernobyl. Wait, is Chernobyl in Canada or Russia? It's in Ukraine. Yeah. Oh. It's in Ukraine between the border of Ukraine and Russia. Oh, because uh, it was found somewhere in the Soviet Union. Hmm. When it was first discovered. <laughs> so it's not, it could be not that far away. That's discouraging. <laughs> So, either way, I think this is pretty, e this is a pretty obvious XK. Yeah. It's, it's, it's mole, but it emits radiation that is comparable to a supercritical, uh, core. Okay. Yeah, and apparently... <laughs> The only two ways is that the foundation is found to get rid of it is very hot and nuke it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it. it <laughs> hey, this is it's funny because this is actually an instance where I think maybe it's a good idea to just toss it at the sun. <laughs> yeah. And again, that could also fuck with the sun. Yeah, if it manages know, to we... survive. <laughs> well, I guess that's the thing. Like, the sun is a nuclear reaction. This is nuclear mode. Like, it could react in an unknown manner. Is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Like, you gotta keep in mind, when it comes down to nuclear science, like, the slightest miscalculation can lead to just over-the-top levels of disaster. Like specifically, like what, like if you ever want to go, take a I look just, at the. I just found the word I wanted to use. <laughs> Atomic okay. brain Yep. Well, so the words I wanted to use were nuclear fusion and nuclear fission. Oh yeah. yeah. Like I, I honestly really find those interesting. Hmm. I, I think I tend to be more interested overall in like the history like the history of nuclear science as it relates to like as a social phenomenon. Fair. Just just generally because I tend to be more interested in uh, I I like the history behind it too, but my brain also yeah. I'm very I love science, so my brain's just like, yep. Yeah. Go to the science part. Yeah, like like I can get behind some science here and there. But at the same time, I'd say that my brain tends to be most fascinated with sociology. So, yeah, when I, when I'm thinking nuclear history, my brain tends to immediately go to thinking about the effects of nuclear technology on the human race as a whole, ways that it's interacted at times. Yeah. That and just how 
fucked up the human body can get when exposed to radiation because that I, I i looked into that <laughs> I, I still i still i i i still stand by the fact that i think that radiation poisoning is by far the worst way someone could die because literally any symptom you imagine can happen it's it's the body's machinery getting fucked up by tiny particles like it can react in almost any way imagined yeah, it basically like destroys how your DNA structure is, causing whatever DNA is destroyed or messed up to mess up in the. That's that's why it can do anything. It's terrifying, and I'm also very glad that it's the type of, like it. it while it's both the most horrifying way someone can die, in my opinion, it's also the least. Like statistically speaking, one of the least likely ways for someone to die, because it's just such a rare occurrence. Well, anyway, hired to do a specific job that they don't tell you involve the radiation, like with the radiation girls. Well, yeah, but like, what what I mean is like on average, most people aren't going to be exposed. To. That's still a fucked up situation and obviously it still happens but it's just like like car car accident or radiation poisoning which one of these is more likely to take you out okay car accident yeah also pretty pumped because at this point it is officially illegal to do things like that now yeah <laughs>